Hi everyone, Armored Pants here, and I have another a video for you in the Russian line, the Tier 8 Premium Tank, the IS-3 Defender. Uh, we're going to have a look at the tech spec as always, and as always we will use Blitzhanger.com. Then we're going to have a look at some gameplay. There's a couple of mini tutorials in here. This is going to be a bit of a mammoth video, but hopefully a very good one. But of course you'll be the judge of that. Now, as I said, this is a Premium Tier 8. It's a good, solid, balanced, heavy tank. And it's a blitz tank for blitzers it's a good tank to have in your garage a collectible tank and um, you know it's also a very very solid performer and has a 122 millimeter gun like most of the is tier 8 range 7.5 second shell reload um, in the magazine just three shells in a magazine get 232 millimeters of pen with apcr 297 with heat which is our promo and 67 millimeters with he which is quite high so load up some he more velocity is high higher than the is3 APCR gives you 1400 meters per second and 1820 with supercharge, which is really fantastic, one of the highest in the tier. Most velocity is not equal though. Heat has much slower at 1066, HE is 1027. Pay attention to shell management because there's an 80% difference in muzzle velocity between APCR and heat or HE. What does that mean? That that's 800 meters per second, so a target 500 meters away, it's going to take a half a second longer for your shell to reach, which means you could miss. So be be aware of that when firing non-APCR rounds. If you're going to fire less when moving with a heavy, so therefore I would use refined gun rather than vertical stabilizer. It's a premium tank, so let's look at the credit coefficient. It's 165%, which is very good. Um, it's good in tier 8 because the top is a super pershing at 190%, so it's not... Um, it's not that bad at all and it's going to be a good credit earner for you it does 40 kilometers per hour so it's pretty good it's pretty fast it's 15 kilometers in reverse so for a heavy tank this tank can pretty much move very well because it also has a very good power to weight ratio so it accelerates very quickly it also has good reverse so this is a really tough brawler and many light and medium tanks come up against this and they suffer very badly it also has decent concealment for a heavy um, if you um, are up against a light tank, of course, you're going to be spotted up. But, you know, even against something like an uh, RU251 for a heavy tank, its concealment numbers are not bad at all. Um, but, of course, that's not what a heavy tank is about. A heavy tank is about its armor, and this tank has fantastic armor. This is a mobile castle in every sense of the world. Just look at some of the um, relative armor numbers that you can get on this. It also has this spaced armor on the side. What does that mean? Well, it means that HE and heat is not gonna max roll you because it explodes on impact, hits the spaced armor, and then doesn't go through to the main body armor. Um, you can see here, we're kind of looking at a, a side scraping angle. It's not even that acute a side scraping angle. And this tank has very, very good relative armor. So you're gonna bounce shots. It also has a very strong turret. You're gonna need to angle in this tank and you're gonna need to side scrape. So therefore, I thought it would be good for us to have a look again at the mini side scraping tutorial. So we're going to have a look at that in a second so that we can discuss angling mechanics, side scraping mechanics, how to do it in case you're new to heavy tanks or you simply want a refresher course. If you know how to do it, then I do apologize for boring you. But of course, you can just skip by it. So. As we said, this tank is all about the armor. So let's take this time out and have a look at the mini side scraping tutorial. Because this tank is really effective at bouncing shots. But of course, you need to help the tank by uh, understanding angling mechanics. So what we have here, the green is simple piece of plate armor. It's represented then by the outline of the plate armor. And this red uh, arrow shows penetration. So let's say that's 150 millimeter of plate armor and we've got 165 millimeters of pen. So flat on, the shell goes through the armor. Simple, right? This is basic physics. Higher armor piercing uh, number goes through a lower armor uh, plated uh, uh, depth right so 165 is bigger than 150 so the 165 millimeter penetration will go through the 150 millimeter of play armor now if you angle you create a higher relative armor and uh, uh, higher relative armor number so what we mean is you angle the armor plate like this you can now see how th much thicker the armor is compared to its original thickness which is in the outline 
and you see now when the 165 millimeter of pen shell hits it doesn't go through because it doesn't have enough pen to go through because now this 150 millimeter armor plate is actually effectively about 175. If you over angle though, so you think you're angling, you still make it a bit thicker than it was before. If we look at the outline, it's still thicker, but it's not quite thick enough to uh, stop the 165 millimeters of pen. So you've angled up and created maybe 160 millimeters of relative armor, but the 165 millimeter still goes through. So that's how not to angle. This is called over angling. So therefore you haven't created um, an angle which is effective enough to create those higher relative armor numbers. You need to create in this example a relative armor number which is greater than 165 and in this case we haven't, in the previous example we have. That is the basic mechanics of angling and you need to know how to angle in this uh, tank because if you do you are going to have a great time playing it because it's so effective. So basic angling mechanics, if you're flat on it's much easier to be penned, right? So this piece of armor here is flat on, the shell comes and goes straight through it, right? Again, let's use the example of 150 millimeter um, plate and 165 millimeters of pen. However, we angle up again. Now we've made the, ang the relative armor thicker than its actual 150 millimeters. You can see that by looking at the original thickness of the armor in the outline compared to now how the uh, armor plate is angled up. We can see it's much thicker now than 150 millimeters. It's actually probably about 175, 180, and that 165 millimeter shell bounces off. And that's where you get the bounces on blitz. That's how shells bounce. Pretty simple, right? Um, but again, we see you have the same uh, armor plate at the same angle but the shot is fired from a different angle and we see that it goes through because where the shot is fired this time, not only are you not uh, thicker than 165 millimeters, you've actually lowered the thickness of the armor plate considerably. So simple. Now let's have a look at angling mechanics and how they work in side scraping, right? Here's a building. You are behind the building, you come out straight on and you've got your 150 millimeter of, sh of armor and it's flat onto the enemy and the shell fired at you that does 165 millimeters of pen goes straight through you. And you see inexperienced players playing heavy tanks all the time and they do this, right? They pull straight out from behind the building flat on and they get smashed, right? So that's how not to do it, right? That is not side scraping, that is just breaking cover. You put your uh, armor flat onto the enemy and you just get smashed and it goes straight through you. So side scraping basically is using angling, but along with a structure. And the structure is used to protect the vulnerable part of the tank, which is normally the lower plate on the front of the tank, right? Even on a heavy tank, the lower plate on the front is usually more vulnerable. So you use the building to protect that. So if you align like this to the building, look how thick the armor is. Look how thick you've made your relative armor vis-a-vis -vis the enemy. Look how thick it is in comparison to its original thickness shown here by the outline of the plate armor. So that's 150 millimeters and you've just made your plate armor about 300 millimeters thick in terms of relative armor. So any shot fired at you, 165 millimeter, but in this case 200, 220, 250, 300 millimeters of band is gonna bounce straight off. Again, you pull out, even at this a more acute angle, you pull out, look how thick your armor is compared to its original 150 millimeters as outlined here by the outline of the original, uh, the yellow outline of the original um, plate armor. And you can see it bounces straight off because look how much thicker your armor is. Your armor is about 200 millimeters thick there rather than the original 150 millimeters. And that's how angling works. And that's how side scraping works because if you remember the previous example where we showed the front of the tank was vulnerable, now the front of the tank is actually hidden by the house. So you reverse back at this angle, you fire up the side of the house at the enemy and they bounce off you. So let's go back to our tech spec having done that mini tutorial. Now let's have a look again at the side of this tank. Look at those relative armor numbers here up at 550, 580, 600 millimeters of relative armor on the side. It doesn't matter what's being fired at you, it's gonna bounce off if you uh, side scrape in this tank and you side scrape effectively. Look at 
the front of this tank against a tier 7 tank it's virtually impenetrable that's what faces you against a tier 8 more or less the same even against a tier 9 this tank really holds its own the lower plate's a bit vulnerable but you need to have a big gun and you need to spend time aiming and of course if you wiggle or jiggle or if you're side scraping you will get a bounce because you're going to be protecting that lower vulnerable part of the tank or it's not going to be visible at all if you're side scraping properly so you're going to get a lot of bounces in this tank you're going to get steel walls spartan badges because this tank if played correctly if you follow those angling mechanics you will get bounces if you follow side scraping rules you will get bounces you might get damage to your track server but you won't take damage you won't lose hit points and you're gonna see in the game exactly how effective this tank can be in those situations by moving and angling you get bounces so let's have a look at this really fantastic heavy tank in in play we're gonna have a look at a first game which is in new bay it's a supremacy game so um i decide to uh, go to uh, uh, b to cap b and then we'll take the enemy on probably at c and um, this is an auto loading um gun system right so you have a magazine that loads up then you've got three shells 7.5 seconds between the shells and depending on whether you run gun rammer or calibrated shells you've around a 23 second magazine reload therefore in terms of consumables i use the multiple repair kit engine accelerator and um, mechanical repair kit your standard round, as we said, is APCR. Your Pramo is heat, um, and you, then you have heat rounds, and you have quite a lot of um, heat rounds. So you've had quite a lot of pen on the HE, so therefore load up some HE because you can pen most medium and all light tanks with the uh, HE rounds on this tank. Now, another thing about your shell loadout in this tank is make sure that you have the shells loaded in multiples of three because there are three rounds in the magazine so there's no point having 17 rounds because then when you have apcr because then when you come up to your last uh, magazine reload assuming you fire that many shells you're only gonna have two apcr rounds in it right now you have to fire something else as your third round so there as you saw i had 18 rounds of apcr loaded up and i have multiples of three loaded on each of different shell types so just something to think about gives you much more effective shell management during the game going to have a look here we're going to get a max roll onto this uh, kv3 he is side scraping but he's actually not going to side scrape very well he comes out um, and he's showing me the vulnerable lower part of his tank and bam max roll him for 500 damage points I'm not scra side scraping here and there's a reason for that you see this small ledge of concrete that sticks out if you're in this position on that map it means you don't have to side scrape because that protects the lower vulnerable part of your tank so it means that you can come out and only your turret is available you saw what that turret looks like when we had to look at the arm inspector so you don't actually have to side scrape there so it actually makes it a lot easier uh, to get shots on the enemy just use that piece of country sticking out to protect the lower part of your tank and you get very effective um, shots in without taking damage as I did there even if it's a, benched, a bigger gun than the KV-3 so we've done a good job here as a heavy tank right if you remember the heavy tank guide the role of a heavy tank if you haven't watched it or you've forgotten about that and you're going back to playing heavies then I would encourage you to watch it again but the role of a heavy tank basically is you're kind of a mobile castle your job is to see uh, is to um, uh, take um, strategic positions on the map for your team so you can see there i went to b then captured c and that's what a strategic um, um, heavy tank play player should be doing right you should be seizing those strategically important positions on the map because you know if you're not doing that you're not doing your role your role is to be frontline take the fight to the enemy now watch here i'm going to slow it down just look at this this bounce from big gun right there on the side and that is those strong relative armor numbers we discussed he tracks me but does no damage points i have one in the pipe 
and bam, clear them off. So you saw there just how effective, even against the big gun on the Scorpion, that um, the armor in this tank can be if you get the right angles. And you saw he was firing into probably about five to six hundred millimeters of effective armor on the side, and there's no way he was going to pen me. The fact that this tank is mobile and agile because it has a good power to weight ratio also means that you often present a moving target to. Um, there's absolutely no way he's going to pen me because all he had to see was my turret there. There's no way he was going to pen me. And um, you see, I'm just getting bounces all day long. I know it's again uh, against um, uh, tier seven lights and mediums, actually boat light tanks. Um, but this tank will get bounces even against bigger tanks. You see there again, another bounce, just by angling up the tank, a second bounce. What these guys should have done um, was they should have attacked me together and they should have attacked me from uh, opposite sides because it doesn't matter how good the tank is or how good the player is if you're attacked from both sides um, front and back or two or opposite sides you can only put your armor in one direction and you can only have your gun facing in one direction so generally it puts you at a huge disadvantage in fact if you're attacked front and back um, and that's what they should have done um, they didn't of course um, so therefore we um, were able to clear him off and my thinking here is that I decided to go to this is gonna go, this is probably gonna go down to points they had collected all of the bases uh, so therefore I went to the nearest base which is a rather than try to chase him because there's no way i'm going to catch him right and he could win this on points right even though this is fast um, and good acceleration for a heavy tank you're not going to catch that a and x now i'm leaving a and what a, an inexperienced player might do here and what uh, might lose him the game is go to try to chase this tank in b or c but as the only base i have is a it's obvious that he's going to come to A, so therefore I pretended to move off and then moved back, thinking that he would come back along this route into A, which is exactly what he did. Um, how the HE round bounced off from there, I don't know. Now this guy here, he doesn't really have a choice. He's going to lose, so he has to go to try to um, stop um, getting points from A, and then he gets smashed. Uh, but he had a good game, this guy, and... He did the right things there. There wasn't really much else he's going to lose. He's going to lose anyway, right? But there you go. Um, almost 4k damage, 5 kills, over 1500 XP, which for a tier 8 is pretty impressive. That's what sort of delivers mastery badges at tier 10. And that's not just about the damage, but it's about, you know, um, actively going and playing the heavy tank role, seizing B, then seizing C, taking the fight to the enemy, playing the role of the heavy tank. And you can see that this tank is very effective, particularly when it's top tier, but even when it's up tier, this tank is effective. It can hold its own. Um, deliver a ton of medals there, Rally Walters medal, high caliber, top gun, mastery, mastery badge. One of the things that you need to be very aware of at this tank though, is its um, firing system. So because it's a magazine loaded tank, let's again take another time out, have a mini tutorial again, and have a look at auto loaders because this and this is one of the original auto loaders in blitz this is the granddaddy of auto loaders one of the first to appear in blitz um, and it has been power creeped somewhat by the likes of the firing system in the pantera uh, by the development of some other premium tanks at tier 8 etc but nonetheless this is still a very very effective tank it has um a couple of disadvantages with auto loaders which we'll discuss during the next gameplay but for right now let's have a look at all playing auto loaders themselves so if you're firing a normal um, gun system in a tank this is how you engage the enemy you engage the enemy in a constant uh, manner during the game you've got a fixed amount of time between your shells and you can therefore engage the enemy in a constant linear manner during during the entire game right that's not the case with an auto loader with an auto loader you actually have ups and downs and you engage the enemy in this pattern 
So if the green line represents how a normal shell firing tank engages the enemy in a constant linear pattern, you engage the enemy in this cyclical pattern, which has periods of increased activity and periods of decreased activity. And they, of course, are represented by when your magazine is full and has shells in it, and when you're reloading that magazine. You've decreased activity because, of course, you can do things like capture bases and move around the map, but you can't engage the enemy and inflict damage on them, right? You've increased activity because you can move, capture bases, uh, but you can also fire shells, and you fire more shells and, and do more damage than a tank with a normal firing system does. But, of course, you do it for a limited period. And this is called burst damage. And when you're doing that burst damage, or when you have the option to do that burst damage, you engage the enemy in a far more effective and increased manner than a normal tank with a normal firing system. So the objective when you're, for, when you're playing an auto loader is to maximize those periods of increased activity and to minimize uh, the periods of decreased activity. So here's some tips on playing auto loaders. Count your shells. Always make sure you know exactly how many shells are in your magazine. When you're reloading, stay safe. Um, make sure that you're in cover um, or at least not exposed because you can't fire back. Use inactive time, therefore, when you're reloading to do other things that help. For example, base capture or moving around the map to engage the enemy. Remember to keep your shell icon open. Why? Because you don't have to fire off the last shell in a magazine to start to reload. If you tap the shell icon, it automatically reloads. And what does that help us with? Well, it means you don't need to fire. That's an amateur mistake. And you often see people who are using auto loaders for the first time. They've got one shell left in the magazine and they fire it off to get a full reload. You don't need to do that. You keep your shell icons open and you tap on it and it automatically reloads. Therefore, you don't have to fire, which gives away your position, it breaks camo, and also waste rounds, which wastes credits. So no need to do that. Another tip is that when you have periods of inactivity, or you don't need to fire at the enemy, so you're moving around the map, or you're capturing a base, you're not going to be firing, reload your magazine. Even if you've only fired off one round, and if you've got two left in the magazine, if you're not going to be doing anything for the next 20 seconds, why not reload the magazine? Because... The more times that you can deliver maximum burst damage, the more effective you make the tank. So if you fire off 10 full bursts during the game, you're going to do significant more damage, be far more effective than if you fire off only 8 full bursts. Um, so therefore, use downtime to make sure that you have the maximum number of shells in your magazine for the most amount of times during a game. Simple tips, but if you follow them, you will be far more effective in this tank or with any auto loader and have far more joy. So let's have a look at game two, which is Desert Sands. Um, again, I'm going to play sort of this as a classical heavy tank. I'm top tier again, so it makes it a bit easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go towards C, down the heavy tank channel. I'm going to try to um, get into a position where I can use my armor, side scrape, get bounces and put damage into the enemy. So you can see here, um, even against the Tiger, which is a fairly mobile heavy tank, it's almost like a helium, this tank takes off. And you can see now I'm out accelerating them. Of course, I'm using engine accelerator. But nonetheless, this tank is effective at um, taking off from a stop start. You can see that there. And I am the first to get to see, not only ahead of my teammates, but also ahead of the enemy, right? I get into a side scraping position here. Um, and I decide to, I'm going to go on and um, I'm going to put my armor in front and I'm going to take on this Tiger 1 and the Black Prince. I'm lucky in that they're both lower tier heavies. So therefore I'm pretty certain that I can uh, put damage into them and I can bounce shots off them with that really, really good frontal armor that we had a look at during the, um, during the armor inspector, during the tech spec. Now, we see here I've done a great job. I've captured uh, the base and I have actually uh, made all three of my shots count and I've cleared off the enemy and um, cleared off one enemy tank. Now I'm staying safe. As we discussed in the auto loader tutorial, I'm staying safe. I'm keeping myself out of trouble while I reload. I'm taking a sneak peek. I'm setting myself up for my shot and then I come out, bam, another big round into the Black Prince. He's not having a good day at the office at all. And then, of course, I 
I may I reduce them down to 167 hit points so my allies can take him out. Now, this is what I mean about this LTTB and you know, what he's doing. He almost gets me um, smashed there, but thankfully I'm able to look at this guy in the LTTB. I mean, look, he's going out backwards to the enemy, just asking for somebody to put a HE around them. I really don't know what he was doing. Um, you saw there what I did was, I thought I was going to have some downtime, so I went on to a full reload in the magazine. Bounce a shot, bounce another shot. I mean, really, if you, especially if you're in a lower tier medium or light tank, the last thing you want is this IS-3 Defender coming towards you. You're just seeing, like, it's like a tomato with an erection coming towards you. You're just seeing all red. There's, it's almost impenetrable. You're not seeing any vulnerable spots. It's like a rock monster. It has no vulnerable spots. And look at this. I mean, I'm full on to these. I'm not even able to side scrape. And look how many shots I've bounced. You know, I understand that they're medium and light tanks, of course. But just look at that, you know. I mean, I'm out and I'm open, I'm exposed. And they're not able to pen me. And that's how good this tank is. And it is a, it is a top tier bully. If you're top tier in this tank, you can really bully the opposition. You saw there, I had no fear whatsoever just going straight out and attacking that, um, uh, T40, that P43. Uh, put a round into him, enables my ally to clear him off. Now I'm going to reload. So again, I'm going to uh, stay safe. Another um, key point in um, this game is communication, right? And I don't mean this game, this particular game, I mean in Blitz as a whole. So I'm telling my allies I'm reloading. There used to be a reload uh, button in, in the communication that you just used to hit and you just tell your allies you're reloading. They've actually taken that out now. But it's important to tell them what you're doing, right? Because they may wonder why you're not engaging the enemy. So you just need to tell them I'm reloading. So I wanted to tell them what was going on. So there we go. Another mastery game delivered in the US 3 Defender. Um, as you can see, a lot less XP this time, less than 1300. A lot less damage. Uh, but nonetheless, pretty good game. And again, a good example of how to play this tank, but also how to play a heavy tank. Moving into key positions on the map, seizing those positions, doing some damage on the enemy, helping your allies clear off enemy tanks as we did with the Black Prince, clearing off tanks yourself if you can as we did with the Tiger, going to seize another another strategic position on the map which is base, num base B, um, then going and using your big gun to inflict damage on the enemy again which enabled my allies to clear off um, some more reds, communicating, telling them that um, I am reloading uh, so that they know exactly what's going on. They can uh, plan their own gameplay accordingly. And you saw there, by the way, I got a steel wall badge. I told you steel wall badges will come all day long in this tank if you play it correctly. Move it around, create those angles, side scrape. You will get bounces all day long because this is a quintessential heavy tank and it is a really, really good heavy tank. As you know, I'm not a big fan of the IS, uh, IS range, but I do love this tank. So let's recap. This is an excellent heavy tank. It's well balanced. It's pretty good at everything. Um, good gun, it's mobile, um, you know, good armor. Um, watch the heavy tank guide again because this is good at the basics of heavy tank play. It's an essential, it's a quintessential heavy tank. It's excellent armor as you saw, it can side scrape front and back. It's gonna get bounces when you angle. 122 millimeter is good, it has good gun handling. Effective DPM is great. Uh, reload 7.5 seconds between shells and 22.67 seconds for the magazine if you use gun rammer. It's about just over 23 if you use calibrated shells. As I said, it's well balanced tank, solid at everything. As you saw there, it's solid dependable tank. You need to angle this tank though, you need to angle, and if you do, you will get bounces, you'll get steel wall medals all day long. Play this tank as a frontline heavy and um, watch the guide on channel to see how and why you should do this. Even if you're up tiered, it still holds its own. Use supercharged and refined gun. Um, I would definitely use those. And then it's up to you whether you want gun rammer or calibrated shells. Calibrated shells may be even a better option. This tank is forgiving, you know, use as a hammer, you know, hammer the enemy, you know, it is a blunt tool, but a very effective one. Move and angle and maximize those relative armor numbers and you will get those bounces all day long. When starting, play front on because it's forgiving and allow you to make some mistakes. It's a forgiving tank. 
you know it allows you to make some silly mistakes and it will bounce shots you know as a premium tank it's good credit coefficient 165 you know so and that's exactly what you want from a premium tank you want it to earn those credits for you right you know because credits equal money so the music was Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture and Prokofiev's Montagues and Capulets from his Romeo and Juliet Ballet, uh, which I hope you enjoyed. Two great pieces of music for this great Russian tank. So cheers much, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful, I hope you found it enjoyable and I guess all that remains for me to say is, pants off. <laughs>